All right, welcome everyone to Watchtower Mobile. You see above us there, Injustice 2 Mobile. <laughs> right there. I can't touch it. It's there though. Uh, we're here to talk about Injustice 2 Mobile, our monthly Injustice 2 stream, yep. mobile wise. Uh, as usual, my fun guest host, <laughs> co host, funnish, yeah. funnish, funnish co host, yeah, yeah. Mr. Ray McCaffrey. You can find him at Ray McCaffrey. How you doing? I am Tyler Lansdowne, the community specialist of NetherRealm Studios. You can find me at Tyler Lansdowne. And then we have a special guest today, everybody. Mr. Brian Wing. Hi, I'm the uh, lead mobile UI UX designer. Which we will get into in a moment. Yep. And you can find him nowhere on Twitter. <laughs> so, I'm on there, I just don't use it. Oh, okay, fine. It's, so you can find him. <laughs> don't go search him. It's weird. Uh, guys, behind the desk, as usual, one of my six or seven favorite people in the world... Mr. Matt Burke over there. Matt Burke, yeah. Hey everybody. Oh, yeah. Can you hear can you hear the stream clapping? Because I cannot. But welcome. Uh, Matt's getting married, everybody. So everybody, congratulations to Matt in stream chat. Congratulations, huh? Matt. Congratulations. Thanks, everybody. There we go. There we go. So we're here to talk today about a lot of really cool stuff that's coming up with mobile, right? Yep. Uh, we like we said, we're going to do these once a month, and it seems to always coincide with an update that's coming soon. Mm -hmm. no, no, not unlike last update, we have a lot to talk about. Yep. And I thought it'd be fun to bring a special guest in to talk more about other stuff, too. So, that's Brian Wing. We're going to talk about UI and UX. What is it? Who knows? I hope you do. Uh, hopefully. I, I need to Google it. Good, <laughs> good. Uh, so, UI is anything that you interact with. So, if you go on a website, use an app, uh, and most video games have it, UI is everything that you interact with that's outside of a game. Uh, so, uh, when you're going through the menus, when you look at the HUD, uh, that's everything that's UI. And we also do UX, which is the way people think through problems. So if you're trying to accomplish a goal, how do we best get you to that goal? How do you accomplish that? Uh, so that's really what our department does. So you, so you, actually, you create all the, all, the, all the buttons you push mm -hmm. and make sure they go to the right place that makes sense for a player. That yeah. like it, it says, hey, you're going to go to see your stats here. It doesn't send you to your gear. Like Correct. You, the, yeah. the user layout interface, that's right. awesome. Effectively communicating as much information as we can uh, in the best way possible. And I would assume, and maybe I'm just talking here, doing it on a, on a mobile device can probably, there's probably some challenges in that because you have a lot, a lot less space to use for people to be able to see it. Like you're watching it like on a 50 inch television, yeah. a little easier, but now you have to like find ways people can see things and put them in different places like that. Yeah, too. so I used to work on the console game and uh, when you go to mobile, it's a lot different. So at the console, you get like the nice big screen, like you said. Yeah. When you go to mobile, you have to worry about like, are you able to tap things correctly? Uh, the flow is a little bit different. Um, and people are just going to want different things out of it overall. And there's just like in our games, because of all the places you can go to do different things, there's just a lot of menu swapping and things like that as well. Yeah, the, the UI for Injustice 2 was a massive undertaking, and Brian, has, Brian and his team did nothing short of amazing work with it. I think it looks great, and there's a couple things we're going to talk to you about today. First of all, mm -hmm. later we're going to get to some quality of life stuff that you talked about that yes, a lot of the fans... Great. It, it's so funny that a lot of these quality of life things, like if you don't play the game, you're like, what is that? Yeah. And people are going to hear some of these and be like, oh... Awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um, we also going to talk about something that I think is really neat in the game, and I think a lot of people do, is our card art. Mm -hmm. How we've kind of changed. So actually, you want to start talking about some card art. Yeah, so uh, from Injustice 1, we kind of went to a little bit more of a, an illustrated style. Uh, and we really wanted to do that because we felt we could get a little bit more action out of the poses. We felt like we could get better colors out of them uh, and just kind of make them look a little bit cooler. So we can walk through, you actually brought, you brought some cool yeah, pictures. Yeah, so we have uh, some examples. So right now you can see the uh, 3D model. So this is how we kind of start the whole process. So we send our illustrators uh, a 3D model. They can take a look at how the character's going to look. Uh, and then we move on uh, to a first sketch. So we'll go through a, different, a couple different sketches. We'll give some feedback to the illustrators, um, talk about like what's the cool pose that they can be in. Uh, and really talk about that as the card progresses uh, from the lower tier to the higher tier. Can I add something real quickly? Sure. Is because you're a UI artist, you actually put UI on top of the picture where it says sketch. Yes. <laughs> that was real. I mean, that's. I can tell that this is what you do because you made the pictures look better than like than I would have with nothing. You would have done a good job too. I don't know if I would put a, a sign that said sketch though, which I really like. I'm, I'm proud of you for that. So. Uh, yeah. So then we move on to kind of what's called the color phase, and that's when you do an initial color pass, kind of get some background in there start talking about how the lighting should be on the character. Um, you can kind of really see that it's starting to come together. And then we move on to what the final card art is going to be. Uh, and, it's, of course, we named the final version, final, 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 final. final. This is final, the real final, final version. Final, final, final. done. We're finished. Yeah, Got it. <laughs> uh, and you can kind of see that there's some uh, better color in there. The lighting is a little bit stronger. 
uh, there's some effects going on, and that's something that we kind of undertake for every single card in the game. It's cool. Can you pat uh, back to the last one, Burke? Is that possible? I, I love how like the color up phase are really, like we. I guess in console, what a what a similar thing can we do? We use sort of like speeds. They were they're called in yep. some certain same sort of thing. And I love if you go to the next one, just how much the like the dynamic lighting just really adds to the look and sort of power of the character, and like the awesome splashes in the water. And it, I mean, I, the, the art we did for the Injustice ones was cool, but these these are definitely more. They, they they're feel alive. there's they're they're yeah. alive. There's yeah. more movement yeah. to them. I think that's definitely. really really cool. Um, awesome. So that's sort of how they are created, mm -hmm. and we do them for for every single one. We're going to show you later a are bunch of new ones. Oh, good. Yeah, we are. So uh, <laughs> they, they will be coming to the game very soon. Um, I want to talk now about the game itself. Okay. About we, you, the one thing you we have a list of things we're going to talk about, and you wrote in bold letters, "We are players too," and I think that's really important. Yeah, so that's one of the things that uh, you know we play the game all the time. So some of the things that are frustrating to you are just as frustrating to us. So if you play through the game, you're like, "Oh man, I really wish they would have done uh, this part of the UI a certain way." We realize that, and that's something that we're looking to actively fix in the future. Uh, one of the kind of like mantras that is uh, in the UX field is that you are not your user. Um, so one of the problems is that when you're part of the development team, you kind of see this stuff every day, so you understand how the game should work. But once it gets out into co to the uh, community and everyone starts playing, uh, we have a lot of great feedback on Reddit through some of the uh, comments, and we kind of see that. And it's like, oh, okay, we understand how that works, but it doesn't necessarily translate to everyone. So how can we go about fixing some of that stuff? Yeah, and we kind of like fall into the tunnel vision almost sometimes because Definitely. you're looking at the same thing so much so often that you don't realize that there's, there's this glaring change that can be made to really enhance the overall experience. Uh, and, and, and playing the game ourselves after it's out and then obviously getting feedback from everyone in the community has just been a, a, a huge help for us. Well, the thing, we, the thing we, all, we talk about a lot in the studio is we have a, we have a really a, a large QA department, really good QA department. Yeah. They do an awesome job. Yeah. But, you know, there's no better QA than millions of people playing your game, <laughs> right? Because then, like, better or for worse? For better or for worse, right? So, and that's the thing. Like, cause I, you know, I travel a lot to the, some events and stuff. And if we just talk about console real quickly, there are people who'll be like, "Hey, did you ever think about this for this way this gear thing works?" And I was like, no. "No, I've been seeing this game for a year and a half, and the point you bring up is really good." And the one thing I really want to stress, which we've done for console and we're doing for mobile, mm -hmm. is that we listen. There are certain things in the game that may seem easy to fix. That aren't. Yeah. That like coding wise, you can't do. Mm -hmm. But we listen. Like we, I mean, big shout outs to our Reddit and our forums Definitely. and Twitter. Um, the, the subreddit is full of a bunch of really kind individuals who yeah. give really good feedback. <laughs> Seriously. Um, which I congratulations on that. But there are things we can't do, but there are things we can. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Brian, and this is not immediate stuff that's happening. Yeah, not necessarily the very next update, but things that we're working towards in the future. And I asked him yesterday, I was like, so this stuff will be happening. He's like, yeah, I, I'm like, we've, we've talked to whoever approves this. And he's like, yeah, I approve. I was like, oh, well, good you're here then. <laughs> yeah. So, awesome. So let's talk, so again, just a caveat, this isn't happening tomorrow. This isn't ha maybe not next week, not two weeks, yeah. but this is stuff that's on the horizon. Correct. So, what do you got? Uh, so the very first thing that we want to try and get in is easily repeating operations. Uh, so right now, if you go through an operation, uh, you play through it, and you have to go back in, reload your character into a mission, and do that over and over again. Uh, and so if you really want to easily repeat that, we want to get that right in there so you can tap one button and do it again. Uh, some of the other things uh, that we talked about, and uh, some of these came from Reddit as well, um, is the versus screen, so not just seeing your team. So initially when we put that in there, we thought, hey, it'd be cool to see your team. But now that we've kind of played some and we've gotten some feedback from the community, it's like, okay, we want to see what opponents we're coming up against. Uh, now now we you're don't... loading in, you want to kind of know, yeah. like, okay, who am I going to be dealing with? What do I need to think about how I'm going to fight yeah. that? Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, so uh, you know, we'll see if we can get your team and the other team. Uh, that kind of brings up an issue of how long does it take to load into the match. So you know, we've got to test that out, and there's some uh, tech limitations. Awesome. But you know, we want to try and get that in. Uh, and the last one was uh, arena points. So... When you're in the arena and uh, you play a match and you come back, right now it's a little difficult to tell like where you are. Did you progress? Uh, so once you end a match, we want to show you immediately how far have you progressed in that bar. And then getting you back into the match even faster without going all the way back to the hub, you can just go right back into cycling an opponent and cycling through a lot so faster. Keep, keep fighting through the arena. Exactly. I think a lot of people are going to be super amped about that. Um, awesome. So those are some, that, that's all we have for, for now. Mm -hmm. 
And as always, this game is a living, breathing game that is going to continue to go on. Yeah. So the more things you guys put up on Reddit or on the forums or tweet to at injustice to go yep. We'll keep looking at them again. Not everything fits into the grand scheme of design. Yeah, but I mean, you know, every update we have to we have to prioritize exactly what it is we're going to do. And uh, us being the players, you know, we do prioritize what's important to making the game as fun as possible. And I, I, I hear this a lot sometimes. It's like it, it's really awesome that the people who make the games here play the games. Yeah. Doesn't happen all the time that way. I kind of feel guilty sometimes. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'll just be like, like tapping away at my desk, or, or I'll be at like your desk playing the console game, just like oh, nobody spots me over here. Just, <laughs> so whenever I'm in meetings, sometimes and I'm playing the mobile game, I don't feel bad. You're like, what are you doing, Tyler? You texting? Like, no, I'm working. I'm playing yeah, the mobile yeah, game. Yeah, come yeah. on, <laughs> I work here. Um, so yeah, that's uh, so that's some good stuff. So we are we do play the game. We do listen. Uh, LQ persona is real. <laughs> um, awesome. So uh, we also get a lot of questions from Reddit and from the forums and from Twitter. Yep. So we have, well, quite a few. Yes. And, and here's the deal. Every time we answer questions, and we're probably going to go through 12 or so, maybe more. Yeah. Every time people are like, you didn't answer this question. We don't have time to answer every question. <laughs> we're going to try to get to as many as possible. I feel like this is a good number. It's we, should, we should do a 24-hour charity stream. We should answer <laughs> questions. <laughs> every question we answer, that's $10 to a charity of your choice. Yeah, yeah. So, um, all right, first of all, so here we go. Ray, you want to you you ask the question uh, and answer it? Sure, sure. <laughs> uh, if you don't mind, I'm just going to sure. snag it and make sure. it a little easier. Um, so uh, these are some of the questions that we have pulled uh, from Reddit specifically. Mm. Uh, so uh, with, the Wonder, with the Mythic Wonder Woman uh, arena event ending, do we have plans or anticipation for more arena events in the future? Um, so uh, that event was extremely popular. Uh, so the original uh, design of Arena Mode had characters exclusively in the Arena Store. Uh, to tie in with the Wonder Woman movie, we wanted to do something really cool and epic. Um, that went over really well. Everybody was really happy with the, the, uh, the overall event and how much fun that it was. Um, so, uh, you know, looking to the future, we are talking about potentially adding more characters to multiplayer. Uh, the system is now built, uh, and, and adding new characters isn't terribly difficult. Uh, it's just a matter of prioritizing what update we slot that in. So it's something that we're discussing. Uh, no official decision yet, but something we are looking to do. Right, I'll continue asking you. I didn't okay. know the MWM that. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. I should have known. I just didn't think about it. Yeah. Uh, with the frequency of uh, game updates... Uh, it'd be nice to see an update schedule change logs that players can look forward to. Yeah, so uh, first I'll cover change logs. So uh, before updates, or rather when they're live, um, we are going to post specific patch notes uh, on our forums. Uh, and I imagine our social will link to that stuff as well. Uh, and that'll sort of detail out everything from new content to bug fixes uh, change, uh, to, and to additional changes that we have made. Um, so regarding our regular update schedule, we sort of have two schedules. Um, so we have to actually update the, the, the binary of the game through Google Play and the Apple App Store. Uh, we're looking to do that uh, four to eight weeks, uh, depending on what it is we're trying to do. Uh, for example, you know, we are working on leagues right now. That is a massive undertaking. That that's a that's a whole big thing. So that's going to take a little bit longer. Good UI in, in leagues. Uh, a lot of UI in leagues. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of UI in leagues. Um, so so that one might take a little bit longer. But uh, in the uh, in the interim, we we will likely release smaller updates that are shorter. Um, so that's sort of the binary update. Um, so the one thing that's sort of transparent to all of you uh, that you know we need to be a little bit better about communicating is we actually do weekly live updates as well. Um, so a few weeks ago, you all may have noticed that. Uh, uh, the campaign modes, chapters 1, 2, and 3 were all just a little easier. Uh, gear drops were all increased, uh, and uh, uh, rewards were sort of amped up a little bit through those first few chapters. And we're actually working on the next few chapters as well. Um, you know, we got a lot of feedback from the community saying, hey, this is too tough. So, so that was a live update that was sort of transparent to all of you that we did in the game without requiring a full game update. And a lot of, and a lot of times we'll actually send the message out yes. through, the, through the thing to say, hey, here's some new stuff that's happened. Yep, yep. Um, so, uh, full game, four to eight weeks, roughly. Uh, again, it's all sort of fluid, depending on what we're trying to do. And then we do weekly updates that uh, awesome. fix little things. Right so, pay attention to our, our forums yes. and our Twitter, and we'll post the, uh, the patch notes. Yeah. And, Ray, remind me to pat post the patch notes. I will. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Uh, What's going on with with Powered Supergirl? So I got this question in an email, and I literally wrote the word sigh in yeah, big I letters. Yeah, I saw this. I really, so uh, 
We did put her in the last update. She's a challenge character. Um, but we found a very serious bug with her that basically made her unplayable. And unfortunately, we were not able to release her uh, when we had initially planned to. Uh, in our next update, uh, we are going to be turning on her challenge uh, a little bit after the update comes out. Because uh, she's fixed now, and we want to get her out there so that you can all enjoy her. So, uh, sorry about the delay, but she is on her way. And the cool thing is, now that we have a new cadence... With our challenges, mm -hmm. probably see her a little more often. Yes, yes. The the challenge is running twice a week. That was one of those big changes we had made mm -hmm. based on feedback from all of you. So. Yeah, we wanted to, I wanted to have a stream where we before we did that we had, we had to schedule yeah. this day, but like yeah. that was one of the big things. Like the challenge thing, like give them more, yeah. give them more challenges. Yeah, working out really well. Mm -hmm. uh, timeline for new story content. Um, you are going to get a chapter three very soon. Um, uh, I don't know when we're exactly we're going to talk about when the next update releases, but uh, basically within the next week or so. Uh, so we're going to do chapter three then, and then um, uh, based on what we can accomplish for the updates, like I said, they're they're kind of fluid. Uh, we will add chapters uh, as often as we can. Uh, any way to trade off extra or unwanted shards for specific shards for other characters or gems or? Yeah, so uh, there's some long-term plans for that stuff, and again, it's just a matter of where what update we slot it in. Uh, we're aware that players are starting to collect more shards than they can actually do stuff with. Uh, we are going to build a system to deal with extra shards. Uh, it's something that will be coming in the future. And, that, and that's a thing to think about with you, too, is like when we start having things like this, like these, these little things are like, this will really help us out yep. a lot, but that's going to involve... A bunch of different, just like yep. things you have to go yep. through to create that exactly. thing to happen. Yeah, we need to understand like how can we put that in the current flow and make sure that it feels natural and doesn't feel tacked on. Game. Like you want to make yeah. it, yeah. yeah. It, it has to be totally integrated into the menu system of the game for yep. sure. Uh, and also, a chapter two is coming, not chapter three. Sorry, yes, yeah. chapter two. two. Yeah, we're, yes, on, chapter we're going on chapter two. So we didn't do one for one point four. That's right. Yes. Sorry, chapter two. Chapter two. So sorry if everyone freaked out. Yeah. Okay. We're not going to skip this. We're not skipping chapter yeah. two. Yeah. yeah. We're going to go every other chapter and you have to guess what happened in between. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, what are they called? Those those uh, oh, those novels where you actually get to choose where you go. Like, choose, choose your own adventure. adventure. Yeah. 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 You just, oh, man. Yeah, we'll do it with story mode. Yeah. The Cave of Time. One of the best ever. Um, will they be, okay, this is a long one. Will you be implementing a method of obtaining more gear shards? The current supply of gear shards is extremely low compared to the full cost of grabbing, upgrading a single piece of gear to level 60. Yeah. Uh, I think that is. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, like I said, in a recent live update that we did, we did increase the overall amount of gear drops, and we are looking to do that further in other places. Um, so, in addition to that, new features that we add will also uh, add the ability to acquire more gear. Awesome. Because so. building up gear, big part of the game. Yep. yep. Awesome. Will the energy system get a revamp? Currently, I feel players run out of energy rather quickly due to resource missions, and now... The added challenge <laughs> mode running throughout the week, not to mention heroics and normal campaigns. Yeah, uh, part of one of the, uh, the live update that we had done, we also doubled the amount of energy that you get for the daily objective, uh, just the, the daily login one. Um, so that was kind of a first step that we're taking, uh, and we're sort of monitoring the situation. So if we need to grant more energy at that time or at other points in the game, uh, it's something that we will do. We just need to investigate it a little bit. Awesome. Uh, again, things like that, uh, if you play the game like, a game like this, if you, if you change too many numbers, like there really has to be a real good research on how this will work. Right, we don't, the last thing we would want to do is, is uh, open up too many gates and then go, oh no, we need to take this back, like, like the, this isn't what the players really wanted. That, that's the sort of thing that we're always very wary of. Right. Um, so small incremental changes are the way that we typically do things. Awesome, I just hit my mic with my pen. Uh, just general, this is a longer question. But uh, just crashes in general. Yes. Um, anything you can kind of say about those? I know that, you know, we, we get a lot of tweets about that. And, and again, one thing that can help is if you do tweet out to our support at WB uh, Twitter account, you know, telling the device you're using and that sort of thing. But other than that, Ray, you yeah. have some. So, um, so the number of crashes that are occurring in the game are all sort of related to the same problem. And it, it has to deal with how we're loading and unloading certain menus. It's just the tech of, of UE4. You know, we were a UE3 team uh, for decades with some of the people on the team. Uh, so for Justice 2, we made the very conscious decision to switch to UE4, and with that came some pitfalls. So uh, these crashes specifically, um, are, are we, th we addressed some of them uh, in update 1.4, and we felt pretty good about it. But the issue that uh, is being reported is not easily reproducible. Uh, we do have a really great QA team, uh, but there are only so many guys. When millions of people are experiencing something, it's a lot easier to say, oh, this is the problem. 
Um, so 1.4 improved some of that. Uh, and the next update, 1.5, we've made further improvements. We sort of found the needle in the haystack. Um, so we'll, we're making small incremental changes to fix the problem in 1.5 that we're confident will resolve most of the issues. Uh, and then our plan is to completely squash the issue in 1.6. Uh, I say completely squash, uh, knowing that it will eventually you know, come back to bite me uh, because there will be even worse crashes or something, right? Like that's what will inevitably happen. But right. um, the, uh, the, the system will get its overhaul definitely by 1.6 and hopefully it should resolve all of the crashes. Right. So, and, and that, that's to be said for both console and mobile when it comes to tweeting out, like, when you're getting crashes, how you're getting crashes, because yeah. tweeting them directly to us doesn't help. Doesn't like, help. Contacting support uh, at WB Games, uh, and I don't know the Twitter handle, is it just at WB Games support? Uh, I'll tweet it out later. Yeah. Um, uh, contacting them with information that you have about the crash is actually the most valuable way uh, to, to get us information that allows us to sort of fix these issues. Yeah, because I, mean, I get a lot of tweets when people say something like, this doesn't work for me, I'm like, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, when That's you, all I can do. Right. When you yeah. contact them, we get a lot of information. We get information about your device, how much memory it's got, it's CPU, uh, and all that information really helps us drive home uh, fixing problems. So. Awesome. A uh, couple more. Um, this one's interesting. Would it be possible to only take away the energy after the battle finishes you've won to avoid losing energy if the game crashes? Yes. Uh, so, uh, again, something we've seen a lot of, uh, or rather seen a lot from the community about. Uh, we have fixed this issue in our next update. So now when you go into a fight, uh, we identify how much energy that fight costs, and then only once the match has loaded uh, do we actually decrement that amount of energy. Um, so going into the fight doesn't take it away, starting the fight does. So in the event that there is a crash, especially during load, which seems to be where 99% of the crashes are occurring in this case, uh, you won't actually lose your energy anymore. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to everyone who's saying my shirt's cool. Thank you. <laughs> really, really proud of that. Uh, increasing level to 60. Uh, yeah, uh, so well, it's at 60 now. Oh, uh, part, yes, yeah. increasing past. Uh, uh, our design team is actively looking at increasing the level cap. Uh, so that's something you can expect uh, uh, in a future update. Ooh, uh, let's talk about will we have the ability to unlink from Game Center any chance we can get an option to unlink from the current console as well? So the, the console links right now are permanent, uh, as, as I'm sure most of you know. Um, that permanence is due to issues that we had on previous games. Uh, essentially, the system was exploitable. Um, people were doing things like sharing account information to get unlocks unfairly. Uh, and our solution to that was to make the lock sort of permanent because, you know, our thought sort of was you're going to have your account once it's linked to a console, like that's your console, that's your game, it, right. it, it sort of makes sense. Um, I know um, someone had commented on Reddit that, hey, I linked it to a friend's account and now he doesn't play as much so I don't get the bonuses. Uh, it, fortunately, that's just the nature of the situation. One of the things that we are looking at, though, is potentially... Uh, giving customer service uh, the ability to manually unlink your account if that's something that you want. Awesome. Um, so potentially something for the future. And here's one you both can probably comment on pretty well. It's kind of, kind of This is the, uh, the, the, the coup de grace or questions for the day. This is the big one, right? Yeah. Uh, the, the blocking bug. The blocking bug. Yeah. Yeah. The worst bug. The worst bug. The worst bug. Um, so we did fix it in our next update. Uh, which is great news. Uh, in the interim, uh, there are two workarounds. Uh, and the first one uh, I'll talk about is uh, you can actually pause the game and resume it, and that will unblock you, which is not the greatest thing in the world. Uh, but then, as far as UX goes, I'd like to talk about you know how an another way to do it, which is the two finger block. Yeah, so you can actually uh, put two fingers on the screen, and that will block as well. Um, that's something that it's not necessarily advertised, but it's something that we had from the old games as well. Now, we, you and I talked yesterday, was it you and me? We talked about how that is actually a, maybe a better way to even do it. I, I personally, okay, I... This is, this is pro tip from Ray. Uh, personally, I use the two-finger block rather than the button. Uh, it feels like it's faster, and I don't know if that's true, but it feels faster. It might be, because you're tapping down, and then you can just drop it real fast. I don't know. Yeah, I, it just it feels more natural for me to... to maybe it's because I've been playing our games for five years, and, <laughs> Brian, and I'm used to it. But. Are you offended he's not using a button? I like the two-finger. I'm a two-finger. Yeah. All right. All what right, is it? What, what's the phrase? Uh, the best UX uh, or the best UI has no buttons at all? Something like that. Something like that. Something yeah. like that. We'll go with that. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously, you're just making things up now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, awesome. Those are the questions for now. Uh, we will be back again in what month is this? July, August. Yeah. We'll have some more and probably yeah. some. But the stream's not over. We got. Yeah. Probably close to over, guys. We got a lot to talk about. <laughs> so, Matt Burke, how you feeling? Great. This is when you start pushing a lot of buttons. All right. Are you ready? I'm ready to push buttons on this UI. Use the one finger <laughs> method this time. I don't want you missing anything. Uh, okay, so here we go. We have some new characters coming, right? We do. 
Now, with the update, it's... We don't have a date exactly for it. Do so we're, we're finalizing it now. The, the last build for it is actually in our QA department right now. Um, and uh, I think we had a couple bug fixes that went in this morning. And uh, so uh, as soon as that's ready to go, we'll get it into Apple and Google's hands and we'll get it to all of you. So hopefully within the next week or so. So we want to just give you a heads up on what's coming. And it's pretty exciting. I remember we mentioned last stream, we talked about how uh, the summer is going to get chilly. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have yeah. Captain Cold joining the cast. We do. And he is a gold. He is Captain Gold. Okay. Oh. <laughs> there we are. I see what you did there. There we are. Uh, yeah, so Captain Cold is, uh, like you said, he's our new gold tier character. And uh, as you can imagine, uh, with his freeze gun, he's got a lot of different uh, effects that he's got going for him. Um, the I, re I really wanted to make sure that I had this info up and... and uh, it's taking a second to load. Sorry, um, but the uh, so the the core of it is that he's got uh, he sort of has like the freeze wall on his SP two, uh, and that uh, sends up a freeze wall that you then fire off at your opponent. Uh, his ta or his swipe away and projectile, uh, as you can imagine, is actually his ice gun. So let's he actually show some uh, some Captain Cold. Yeah, we have some ready to go. So yeah, so you can see there he's got his swipe away, uh, and then his uh, SP1 is just sort of uh, three hits. Uh, his super move is really cool, it's actually one of my favorites in the game. Um, so he also has his passive ability, uh, it's called Absolute Zero, uh, and it uh, ups the team's critical attack resistance. So uh, enemy teams that have a, a high crit chance, uh, he actually helps mitigate that damage for the whole team. Uh, and while he's an active combatant, he has a, a starting ability, any, or starting level, he has a 60% chance to disable one of the opponent's abilities, whether that be uh, ability one or ability two. So he freezes it out, huh? Exactly. Got exactly. it. Yeah. It's Captain Gold. Uh, yeah. No? Still not working? Uh, he okay. also has a, a power generation uh Rather, a power drain on his SP one. Okay, that uh, you know, we should, can we can we mind showing the picture real quick again? Again, just like these are so much fun to see. Like having posters of these on a wall would be yeah. really cool. Like I love the 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 ship in the background and whatnot. It's just really cool. So yeah. I'm really enjoying the new look of these. We got three more characters to we talk three about. Three more characters to talk about. Because I don't know if you remembered, we said that summer <laughs> was going to get a little bit cold. <laughs> we got Sub Zero. We do. So uh, uh, Sub Zero released on the console today. Today, ladies and, and gentlemen. And uh, so we, we decided to go ahead and add him to mobile, and he's actually got some really great abilities. Um, so his uh, special three uh, is his ice clone. He spawns the ice clone, and he throws it at his opponent. Uh, and then he actually spawns another ice clone that uh, uh, is the opponent that's currently tagged in. Uh, you don't get to use their super move, and you don't get that character's passive, but you do get a certain percentage of their health and the ability for them to use their other specials. Um, so that's a chance on, on his passive that he's got. Uh, he's also got his uh, classic frost hammer, and of course his classic ice ball. Um, so the, the ice ball will freeze your opponent for two seconds. It's actually really cool if you, if you do sort of like the swipe in, tap, 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 swipe up, and then activate that. You sort of get to reset the combo, and I mean, if you've, if you've got him buffed up with other people on the team, you can actually knock on a player. And I'm, just, I'm in love with his, his super. Oh, yeah. He's one of my favorites. Awesome. Yeah. So, cool tidbit, we actually had to build a whole new ice tech specifically for Sub-Zero and Captain Cold. Really? Uh, yeah, it was one of those uh, fun things we had to go back and forward on. That was a cool, ti a cool tidbit. Cool. Tidbit. Uh, cool. cool. Uh, because the summer... Get refrigerated. Got a little colder. <laughs> um, all right, we got two. We got one more character with two different versions. Yes. We're show. Yes. So we're we doing silver or gold. We're doing silver tier uh, Aquaman. Silver just, tier Aquaman. Just Aquaman. Just Aquaman. Straight Aquaman. Yeah. Yes, Aquaman. Um, so he has been in the game uh, as an opponent, uh, rather as a as a boss fight, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so no, we've decided to go ahead and add him as a playable character. Um, so he's got uh, his passive ability first. Uh, so he does uh, t starting levels, by the way, on these numbers. Uh, he does 10% team stun resistance uh, for per might teammates. So the number of those that you have increases that overall power. Uh, and he also increases the team defense based on medic team resistance. Um, so again, if you mix it up with might and medic heroes, you can actually buff your team's defense. Um, he, of course, has, uh, we, we called it tried to trouble. Uh, on mobile, but you would know it as Pride and Trouble versus SP1. Uh, he goes in with all, yeah. all the stabs in the world. Ah! Yeah. Uh, and then uh, he's got his power of Neptune, which actually does power drain for one, uh, one and a half bars. So. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Now that's just silver. That is just the silver version. Right. Yes. Uh, so then finally we have our gold version. 
Atlantean Armor Aquaman. Um, so again, all these characters, they all have their, their gear that they collect, and so you sort of add that gear on, it builds them up. Uh, I love the, the last level of Aquaman, he looks really cool. Yep. Um, so he, uh, <clears throat> his passive is the, the Water Bearer, and he can apply uh, a healing effect uh, for seven seconds uh, on the abilities that affect the entire team. Um, so when he activates that, he can actually heal himself, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, just one of those really cool abilities that allows you to build that really strong defensive team. You could probably pair him with the Silver Aquaman uh, and build something. High. And I can see it, like, I, I don't know this for a fact, but as I see it now, like, you can see how the design is really starting to build, like, really help you build these teams. Right, right. Where, you know, you're, there's a bunch of different levels. You're building the character, you're building the character's gear, yep. and you're building the team that synergizes best with each other. Yep. And the more characters that come out, the more holes we're going to fill in that sort of, like, yeah. spectrum, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Cool. Um, we're uh, that. Those are the new characters. Those are the four new characters. Yes. And of course, more characters to come. Yes. Yes. We still have more stuff to talk about, though. More changes. We were ready for more well, changes. We got a ton of changes. We got a ton <laughs> of changes, guys. Uh, I wouldn't call them changes. Some cool. Well, this is actually called changes. Yeah, 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 I think we wrote changes. We did write changes there. Yeah. Um, heroic difficulty. Uh, yes. So uh, repeatable battles will now have a one hundred percent chance to drop a character shard. Um, that's one of those decisions that we constantly made, based or um, sorry, consciously made based on feedback from the community. Uh, you know, it takes a lot of shards to level these characters up all the way. We want to give you as many opportunities as possible to get them to five stars. Awesome. Um, so that's sort of the big one. Uh, and now, uh, let me make sure I get the numbers right. So standard difficulty has uh, a chance to drop character shards now as well. Um, so previously you could only get character shards through heroic difficulty. You can actually now get it through the standard difficulty. Uh, and then... The last thing... No, that's really... No, those are the two big things. Yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Got it. Uh, some new some new offers we're bringing up to to the table. Yes, uh, which are really cool. Yeah, so uh, we've added uh, what we're calling conditional offers. So uh, based on characters that you acquire, you will be offered uh, bonuses for them. Um, so essentially, will be uh, a limited time pack for a small amount of gems that allows you to, uh, in one example, uh, level up a character right away, acquire their gear right away. Um, so if you collect, say, Predator Batman, uh, you will get a special offer saying, "Hey, we saw you got this character. If you want, you can pick up his gear right now." Um, so that's like one of those things that we've added. And that's a lot of just more things. More, yeah. Yeah. more yeah. of you. Yeah, well, the team. Yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> yes, you, yeah. there's a team, you're correct, but you, yeah. you do a lot of the UI, yes, of course. Uh, no gold. Uh, so the no gold, um, so it's a, so let me make sure I got this right because it changed a little bit recently. Um, so one of the things that we have seen from, uh, from the community is uh, buying packs and not necessarily getting uh, a gold character. Oh, let, let me talk about that. This for a guy second. complained about it for a very <laughs> I long did. time. Then um, I got a, a legendary Batman. So, so uh, the the numbers are still being tweaked, but uh, the long and short of it is that if you pull a certain number of silver characters, we're going to give you a gold. Um, it's one of those quality of life things that we had sort of talked about a lot on the team, uh, and it just doesn't feel good, and it, it doesn't feel right. You know, to, like trying to get these characters that you really want, we want to offer the ability to get them uh, as quickly as possible. So we've added in that sort of no gold protection. And we talked earlier about the, the growth pack that's coming as well. Yeah, the growth pack is so um, it's an offer where if you are leveling up your uh, player profile level and you get uh, higher and higher, you know, you get some rewards. Uh, and this gives you the ability to actually get even better rewards with each one of those levels. So at, at, at different levels, you'll get more gold, or you'll get more, or you'll get some gems at each like every five, right. ten, yep. that sort of cool. thing. Yeah, and if you're already at a higher level, that's retroactive too, so you can go back. Yeah. And so it's grandfathered in. So if you're yes. at level yep. sixty and you get this offer, you get all the stuff from you behind. Get all it. the stuff from behind. Yes, I love it. Well, here's this is this is big. <clears throat> This, this is all that's, you. That's a big list. Uh, UI, <laughs> we're not going to go through all of these um, UI changes. We got uh, the thing that I think is really cool. There's new unlock animations. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so uh, we have new chest opening animations. So a little bit cooler, better uh, animation on the box. The uh, explosions are a lot bigger. So if you get a silver box, um, you're going to be getting silver shards. You're going to be getting uh, gear, energy, and everything with that. If you get a gold, we're going to have a bigger explosion, uh, and it's going to look a lot cooler, and if you get a legendary, it's even bigger than that. Yeah. Now, I know that, that, I mean, that doesn't change how the game plays. It feels good. But we all, good. But yeah. yeah, but we all play games where, like, you know, you get things, yeah. and the cooler that looks, the more excited you get to get the cool things, right? right? right. Mm -hmm. um, the loading spinner, is that is that something we need to talk about? 
Uh, you loading spinner. Yeah. It's a small. It's a, it looks <laughs> different. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I... Okay, so the pause menu. You yeah, new... so in the pause menu, we now have an option for one-handed play or two-handed play. Uh, so if you do uh, one-handed play, we're going to move the buttons a little bit more, uh, and it's just going to be a lot easier to play with one hand, so you don't have to reach as far for everything. Right. And then this is one we'd, we'd actually talked about a while back, a class wheel. Yes. Uh, I push you Brian. Yeah, so in the uh, pre-fight, right before you're going up against your opponent, you can actually tap in the middle, and we're going to have a class wheel that explains the differences between uh, how the classes interact with each other, like who gives you a bonus versus what class. Right. And, and, you know, and we talked about that at the last stream where it was with the whole glossary question. Yep. This is just, I mean, this obviously isn't a glossary, but this is something that just as we go further, explaining how things work as much as we can in the mm -hmm. game yep. just to help the player. Because, yep. you know, a lot of you players who are, who are on Reddit know exactly what's happening at all times. Right. And, like, it's really good to help the players who are a little newer yep. to understand how things work. Yep. And I'm, I'm sure there's more things like that, you know, coming down the pipe. Definitely. So, uh, awesome, guys. Yeah. That was a... It's a fun one. Yeah, Shuttle talked about a lot of stuff. Matt Burke was a little was a little nervous about the amount of bit. buttons he'd had to push, <laughs> yeah. and I think you did a great job, Matt. Thanks, man. No problem, buddy. <laughs> um, so there we go. That is the Injustice Two mobile stream for July. Yep. We will see you again in August with possibly a new guest. Maybe we'll have you back at some point. Probably not in August, though. No, well, I want to sit with uh, Matt Burke. It's oh, nice. it's actually probably more fun over there. To yeah, be it's a little cramped. And let's say August is going to be a little bit chilly. Uh, no, that was this one. Oh, never yeah, mind. Yeah, no, no, never mind. Uh, so, awesome. Um, just a couple more things uh, in regards to other things around the studio, uh, not mobile related, just to let it out there. Evo is this coming weekend. Yeah. Big tournament. If you want to watch you know, console play, that's this weekend in Las Vegas. I'll be there. Mr. Matt Burke will be there. Uh, be a lot of fun. Um, and again, Sub Zero. Releases very soon on mobile, mm -hmm. and he's available to play today on console. On console, if you would have the the the, you know, the big pack, yeah. you So there we go, guys. Thank you so much for joining us, Brian. Thank you. You were thank great you. on the stream. Great. I had a great time talking to you. Well, I'm glad. That was fun. Ray, <laughs> Tyler, you're all right. Thanks. Uh, so thanks, everybody. <laughs> we will see you very soon. Injustice Two mobile update coming at you really quickly. Have a good one.